Welcome, uh, Ms. Caruselli. Uh, Ms. Caruselli is an archivist uh, who has a uh, uh, specialization in the archive um, uh, faculty of Rome, and she works uh, in the historical archive of the General Curia of the Capuchin Sisters of Mother Rubato. And this is exactly the uh, the theme she's going to be tackling today, and the theme of her intervention: the process of inter inventorying of the historical archive of the General Curia of the Capuchin Sisters of Mother Rubato. So you have the floor. Thank you to the participants and organizers for having included our paper in what was selected for the meeting. My talk wants to present the process of ordering and inventorying the archival patrimony of the Capuchin Sisters of Mother Rubato produced and preserved by the General Curia since the foundation of the Institute. The Capuchin tertiaries, so-called, were, f and, uh, they were called until 1973 when they were received their current name, were founded on the 23rd of January 1885 at Loan in the Diocese of Savona. The found Mother Francesca of Jesus, who was born as Anna Maria Rubato. Only after many decades was she recognized as a founder, although the old tradition recognized her as a foundress. She had already been active in the oratories of Don Bosco and the Cotolengo Hospital in Turin at the end of the 19th century. The Institute was born in the furrow of the Capuchin Franciscan spiritual tradition and intended to respond to two very particular social needs. Care at home of the sick and poor and education of abandoned youth. After having expanded their work in the Ligurian Riviera, in 1892, the Capuchins inaugurated their presence in Uruguay and Argentina, following many Italian migrants. They developed a typical apostolate there that also marked a clarification of the charism, service in large hospitals, and both civil and military and education in boarding schools for needy youth. In 1899, the tertiaries were invited to go to Brazil, to Maranhão, the northeast of Brazil, where seven sisters were martyred at the hands of the Indios in 1901. In 1910, the Holy See, uh, with Decretum Laudis, juridically recognized the Institute, which had already been aggregated in 1909 to the Capuchin Order, and in 1928 approved its constitutions. After, because 37 to 42 mission in Africa only in 1963, the Institute went into foreign missions again, an uninterrupted missionary work, uh, prevalently in the eastern part of Africa, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Peru, Kenya, Cameroon, and then Cameroon and Malawi and in Latin America, Peru, and Ecuador. On the 10th of October, 1993, Mother Rubato was proclaimed the first Blessed of Uruguay by John Paul II, and next May 15th, she will be proclaimed saint by Pope Francis. The historical archive of the General Curia preserves a historical memory of the Institute's governing activity. The documentation we possess today, a 
attests to its evolution from the last quarter of the 19th century through the whole of the 20th century in relation to events that took place in a precise geographical, cultural, political, social, ecclesial, and not least economic context. This historical archive began to be produced and preserved in the mother house of Loano and from 1888 in Genoa following the transfer of the Curia. In 1972, following the the dictates of the Second Vatican Council, the Institute was divided into provinces, and the process of decentralization marked a watershed in the subsequent sedimentation of the documentation. In 1978, the Center for the Study of Mother Rubato, the Mother Rubato Study Center was established, which anticipated a long season of ordering the historical documentation with particular reference to the writings and memoirs of the foundress. The mission entrusted to the Mother Rubato Study Center was coherent with the ecclesial context of the post-council period, motivated by a wide-ranging investigation of the social, cultural, and religious environment in which Mother Rubato was formed and worked, and in which the Capuchins took their first steps. This institute took its first steps. The study center continued until 1993, having reached its main aims, knowledge of the writings and person of the foundress. In 1993, Three, the founder was beatified and the center left the institute a huge cultural work if included in publications, collection of documents and initial organization of the historical archive. In those years, in fact, the reorganization of the archives was undertaken, which had a particular characteristic one that was quite frequent in ecclesial archives and especially in women's institutes, women's uh, congregations. That is, it was reorganized without an inventory. The papers, therefore, were handled, organized, reconditioned, topographically placed according to a logical order, but without the creation of an inventory, with all the material risks and scientific scientific issues that this entailed. However, what was known as the Villa Ordering, named after the Mother General Villa, who was its author, had unquestionable merit. It made the Institute aware of the value of its historical archives, a huge and incomparable deposit of its history and charism which is also echoes and vestiges of the passage of the Lord Jesus in the world, that's Paul VI. In 2001, the General Curia moved to Rome, and part of that building, an entire part of the building, was set aside as the historical archive. Only in 2010, a new uh, reorganization began called the 21st, 21st Century Ordering, which began with the drawing up of a list of the contents of the deposit. However, at least three difficulties were encountered in tracing and trying to understand the original order. The moves of the historical archive, which often had only been partial, following the change of location of the general curia, from Luano to Genoa to Quarto and then Rome. These moves subjected the documentation to being taken apart and handled that made the natural sedimentation of the series less coherent, if not actually interrupted. In addition, the historical archive archives and the archives of the Italian province coexisted in the very same location for almost 30 years, which generated inevitable discrepancies in, their, in what was contained in each. 
previous reorganization criteria. In carrying out the reordering, Mother Villa, although she did certainly work scrupulously, followed criteria that seemed to be influenced more by a managerial urgency and the need to order the material according to subjects than to preserve the logical and structural connections of the archival bond. Therefore, its ordering only partly reflected the nat natural sediment sedimentation of the documentation of the offices of the Curia from its origins to the last quarter of the 20th century. The third critical issue was finding an overflowing, uh, uh, an abundant mixture between archival documentation and the extensive historiographic and bibliographic material referring both relating collected by the Mother Rubato Study Center relating both to the complex legislative process that affected the evolution of norms and the, and the charismatic aspect of the life of the founder. Evolution of norms and charismatics and to the founder. The work of ordering has moved in many directions, but all converging towards a threefold objective. Adequate conservation and protection, proper usability and enhancement of the heritage. Over the last 10 years, the historical archive has become a veritable uh, work site in which documentation has been acquired, reordered, catalogued, inventoried, digitalized, and restored. However, a key factor in this work was, and it's dutiful that we remember it here, the adhesion to the JR project in 2011, which allowed the historical archive to be included in the Register of Ecclesiastical Cultural Institutes, enabled access to funding by the Italian Bishops' Conference, the use of software dedicated to making inventories, and the transfer of data onto a digital platform. From 2014, since 2014, the historical archive date date has been transferred, transferred to the JR Terminal Server online platform, which allows remote access to the database. This is the one of the Italian Bishops' Conference. The conservation use and enhancement project also involved upgrades to the new storage rooms. For example, the inert gas fire prevention system, air conditioning and dehumidification systems, anti-intrusion system and mosquito nets. And to the consultation rooms, they've been made more suitable to their role of research and study through Wi-Fi, computers, printers, photocopiers, reading lamps, and other furniture. And furniture, a photographic cabinet has also been set up for high-resolution reproduction of documents. In this laborious journey, what has contributed significantly to keeping up the commitment and enthusiasm has also been the participation in the annual training courses organized by the, in this very place, by the Italian Bishops' Conference Historical Archives and the Historical Archives of the Capuchins of Rome and the High School of Medieval and Franciscan Studies of the Antonianum. This training has been received but also offered to groups of young trainees as well as to sisters in formation, mostly from abroad, to whom we wish to transmit the value of care and the preciousness of the memory preserved and communicated. Always receiving very helpful and positive feedback.
In 2017, the website dedicated to the historical archive was put online to implement the commitment to reactivate the Mother Rubato archive and give new impetus to scientific research and in-depth historical study of the origins and development of the Institute through primary sources. The study center has been an incredible movement of spiritual, scientific, and human capital employed to piece together the thread of events, characters, and history. Assuming the ideal witness of, of those who inaugurated that unprecedented season of research, we considered the web a suitable means to channel the results achieved in recent years. It, the site is a tool aimed above it all at sisters' information so that they may feel that they are a living part of the exciting, although still little known, history of the Institute. We believe that having historical references fosters a sense of belonging, of recognizing, recognizing oneself as part of a shared journey, and nourishes the need to deepen it, to study it both personally and as a community. In 2020, the printed inventory was finally published. It was a choice that already at that point went against the current, was economically burdensome and not in line with the dominant thinking, but matured in the awareness of what it could have become. In fact, this publication is unique in the panorama of printed inventories of women's congregations founded at the end of the 19th century. So it cannot be considered as a consultation tool limited only to the congregation, but also a potential orientation for other institutions engaged in the inventory of their archival heritage. Moreover, the complexity of a large resource, such as that of the General Curia, connected with many other resources of medium and or small importance, is effectively solved in the printed inventory, where the space devoted to introductions, as well as being conspicuous, as being significant, is also more directly visible and effective. While the work carried out so far in the historical archive has fulfilled the expectations expressed by the Capitular Sisters in 2008 to order the heritage, to put in order the heritage of the first 110 years of archival documentation to publish the inventory, the Institute will also have to deal with the ordering of the extensive photographic collection for which we have recently received approval to join the Che Photo Project. Italian Bishops Conference photo project. The Institute also through this project will finally be able to consult the rich patrimony collected over time and preserved for the sisters who were to come. A sort of witness through images of their ardor as pioneers and believers. Preserving the memory is not only a duty laid down in the legislation on cultural heritage or the obligation imposed on us by national and ecclesiastical institutions. Preserving the memory is a moral debt to our sisters, to their lives given in the service of the Church, more often than not without public praise, without affirmation or expressions of gratitude. Those sisters can still speak, can still tell us about God. Only those fragile memories can make us aware of the incalculable richness of their sacrifice, their silence, and their offering. The papers kept in the archives, often yellowed, creased, and with faded ink, will not be without value if they continue through us through our care, our research, and our sensitivity to transmit and make new lifeblood flow into the church. Thank you.